Hey guys, I hope all of you are having a wonderful day. So I have a very interesting thing to share with all of you. As you know, our initiative as a part of an academy is to make learning fun for all of you. So as a part of this initiative, we have the most competitive gamified UPSC civil services battle that is going to be held. Uh, the first one is going to be on December 6, 2020 and the time is 11 a.m. I'm going to take a couple of minutes and uh, share more details about this UPSC an academy combat right this is an opportunity for you to compete with thousands of learners in india's biggest fortnightly competition so this is a competition that's going to be held on a fortnightly basis that's on every every two weeks right on sunday this particular competition will be held so let me tell you uh, and let me share a few details about this particular competition so it, the uh, there are going to be challenging questions it is going to be curated by some of the best an academy educators in the category it is going to be super fast. It's going to be fun with real-time rankings. You, you'll be able to see you jumping up and jumping down. This gives you a unique opportunity to compete with the best of the best in this particular arena. The, uh, the competition will be followed with detailed video analysis, right? There will be a video where solution analysis will be done by some of the top educators of an academy, right? So you compete, you crack and you conquer. So you get a score which tells you about where you can improve, etc. So you can improve upon your speed and accuracy depending on your scores, you know, with negative markings. You will know where you are lacking and what should be done ahead. There will be a leaderboard. You will get to know your rank. So you will get to know who are the best amongst all of you. And you can also aspire to be one of the leaders in this particular leaderboard. It gives you a rating. And the most exciting part about an academy combat is that there are going to be so many awards, right? What are the awards are we talking about? So if you end up with the first rank, if you are the first person in the leaderboard, you get to win an Apple MacBook Air. And at second place, you're going to get an Apple iPad mini. And at third place, you're going to get Apple AirPods. And also the top 100 rankers will also be given a thousand rupee Amazon voucher. All right, so that's what you can compete with the best. And also it's giving you an opportunity to win these amazing prizes right bonus plus bonus so anyway so what is the contest format so we are going to have this session it's going to be lasting for around 45 minutes there are around 60 questions and uh, there are going to be a total of 13 of such combats right there will be six sessions the scoring will be relative scoring and as i told you this is a fortnightly contest which means on alternative sundays that means every two weeks on a sunday you will be having this competition at 11 a.m all right so i hope all of you uh, you know participate in this particular course so this is something that is a free initiative so you will be able to access that so for uh, accessing this particular combat you would be asked to give a small referral code you can use my code this is completely free i hope all of you participate in this unacademy combat right sign in using the unacademy learning app use my code akm siva and you will be able to have access to this i wish you the best of luck in this and the upcoming unacademy combat thank you are having a very wonderful day so this is me, Siva Prasad, back with yet another video on Science and Technology and CRT series. By now, you might have, must have seen at least around seven videos on basic concepts from NCRTs. We started right from class six NCRT, and currently we are doing class nine NCRT. I started with class nine in the previous session. I will be giving you a quick recap of that particular session, and we will be continuing with new topics today. All right. So the course is being presented. I mean Siva Prasad, I teach live on an academy platform. So in the previous lesson, I introduced to you the concept of matter. We talked about characteristics of matter. I told you about different states of matter. We talked about five different states of matter, namely solid, liquid, gas. Then we talked about plasma. And then we talked about bosons and condensates. All these things were explained in the previous video. In case you missed out, please do go back and watch the same. I told you how it is possible for you to convert one state of matter to the other. Right? This is where we stop. So today I will be telling you about the concept of evaporation. Right? Obviously everybody knows what evaporation is. Right? That is the conversion of water into water vapor. So this happens because of application of temperature. So there are various factors that affect evaporation. Rather than that I can tell you the rate of evaporation. The rate at which evaporation takes place. It is affected by four factors. Let's try to understand them. First factor is called as temperature. The higher the temperature, the faster is the evaporation. Right? This simply does not require any explanation further. The faster you want it to evaporate, the higher the temperature you have to take it to. Next is surface area. The larger the surface area, it is easier for the evaporation to take place. So that is the reason you see when you are having, let's say, hot milk in this glass of water. What you do is you 
transfer this to a vessel that is like this. By doing this, what are you doing? You are actually increasing the surface area. So higher the surface area, greater is the rate of evaporation, right? Next is humidity. Humidity is the moisture content or the water content in the air, right? Higher the humidity, lower is the rate of evaporation, right? So that means you will see if you go to places that are very humid, right? You feel humid in those places. There, if you see, the evaporation does not take place so easily. Right? So that's what higher the humidity, lower the rate of evaporation. So that means just in this case, there's an inverse relationship between evaporation and humidity. All right. Next concept is wind speed. Right? Higher the wind speed, faster is the rate of evaporation. So that is the reason you see when you dry your clothes on a windy day, you see that the clothes are dried faster than on a regular day. So that's why we say evaporation is dependent on the wind speed also. These are the four factors that affect evaporation or affect the rate at which evaporation is taking place. Alright. So temperature, higher the temperature, faster is the rate of evaporation. Surface area, higher the surface area, faster is the rate of evaporation. Humidity, higher the humidity, lower is the rate of evaporation. So lower the humidity, higher is the rate of evaporation. Wind speed, higher the wind speed, greater rate of evaporation. Alright. These are four parameters. Try to remember them. All three, the other three, temperature, surface area, wind speed, these are all directly proportional, while humidity is inversely proportional. All right. So let me just explain some of the phenomena that you commonly observe around you. Right. For example, we tend to wear cotton clothes in summer. What is the main reason we do that? Remember, we tend to sweat a lot in in summers. Right. Cotton happens to be a good absorber of water. Right. What it does, it's a good absorber. So that means it absorbs the sweat. Remember, in summer we are sweating a lot. Right. The cotton cloth, it absorbs the sweat and it exposes it to the atmosphere. So by exposing this, it is ensuring an easy evaporation. So this is the main reason we tend to wear cotton clothes in summer. Alright. This is yet another phenomena you might have observed. In summers, what we tend to do is we tend to keep uh, glasses of water or bottle of water inside the fridge. Right. So you will see that water droplets on the outer surface of a glass containing ice cold water. For example, let's say this is a glass. This has ice cold water inside this, right? You will see outside, right? Outside this glass, there are these water droplets like this. Have you seen this phenomena? What really happens is remember, water vapor that is present in the air, right? Water vapor that is present in the air, it is coming in contact with this cold glass of water, okay? This is very, very cold. It is coming in contact with this cold glass of water. So, when water vapor present in air, it is coming in contact with this cold glass of water. The water vapor and all it loses its energy right since it is losing its energy it is getting converted into a liquid state why because you are reducing the temperature so that is the reason it is getting converted into liquid state okay this is the reason you see these water droplets outside this ice cold water glass okay so that's what you will see water droplets on the outer surface of a glass containing ice cold water if you don't believe me all you have to do is you have to take a glass of water right put it in fridge for a long period of time allow enough time for it to get cooled down then you place it outside on a table you will see after some time these water droplets they start appearing right as i told you the phenomena is very simple water vapor that is present in the air it is coming in contact with this ice cold water they are losing temperature they are losing energy so because of this they are getting converted from gaseous state to a liquid state gaseous state is water vapor liquid state is water so that's the reason you see these tiny droplets of water on the surface after surface of the glass that contains ice cold water okay so these are all phenomena that you observe on a regular basis. All right. Let's try to take this discussion further. We will be talking about the concept of solution, suspension, colloids, etc. All right. I will be introducing a concept called as Tyndall effect. This will take us to a discussion on matter, on pure substances and all. Then we will be talking about different ways in which filtration, the process of filtration can occur, how the process of separation can occur. All right. So let's start with the concept of solutions. What exactly is a solution? A solution happens to be a homogeneous mixture. Homogeneous means very uniform mixture of two or more substances. All right. Solution, salt plus water. Right. Any salt. Let's take example of NaCl, sodium chloride. We often call it as common salt. Right. That's white in color. You put, you add some salt to water. So what happens? Quickly, the salt dissolves in water. You will no longer be able to see the salt that is present in the water. Right? So that's what it quickly dissolves. This is an example of a solution. Right? Particles of a solution, 
or smaller than 1 nanometer. So what is the reason that you are not able to see the salt that is dissolved in water? Because the particles of the salt plus water combination, it is so small, it is actually smaller than 1 nanometer. Right? That is the reason you are not able to see these small particles. All right? It is not visible to naked eye because 1 nanometer is simply too small. 1 nanometer means 10 to the power minus 9 meter. So that means you will put 8 zeros. Right? This is what? 0 0.0000001 meter. This is the meaning of 1 nanometer. Right? Because of very small particle size, they don't scatter a beam of light. What does this mean? First, let me introduce you to a concept called as Tyndall effect. All right? What exactly is Tyndall effect? Have you seen this occurring? Right? Can you see? See, this can be observed when sunlight passes through the canopy of a dense forest. This is a very dense forest. These are all trees that you can see over here. Right? So what is happening is you are able to trace out the path of the light. You are able to see light is coming like this, light is coming like this, etc. Can you see this? All right? I will give you one more example just in case you have not understood. Let us say, let me see if I can draw shapes. Okay, never mind. This is a room. Right. Let us assume this is a very dark room. There is no source of light. Now, what do I do? Is I put a small hole over here. All right. If I put a small hole over here, you will see that light coming like this. Yes. Right. You will see that light is coming like this. So, the path of the light is visible. The path that light is taking is visible. This concept is called as Tyndall effect. All right. When you are able to see, when you are able to trace out the path in which light is traveling, when you are able to see that, that concept is called as Tyndall effect. All right. So what is happening is, remember, the particle size are very, very small. Since the particle size is very, very small, they don't scatter a beam of light. Okay. What does this mean? Right. So this is a glass. Right. In this, you have salt plus water. Okay. This is salt plus water. What are you doing? Is you are shining a beam of light. You are shining this. The beam of light is simply a passing through, right? So the particles, they are so small that they are not scattering this beam of light. They are not interacting with this beam of light. Since you are not interacting with the beam of light, the light simply passes through. So you don't get them scattered. So therefore, the trace, you cannot trace out the path of the light. I will tell you when Tyndall effect is possible, then this concept will be clearer to you. Just for now understand that because of small particle size, they don't scatter a beam of light when they pass through the solution, okay? So the path of light is not visible in a solution. Right? So, you do not understand what is the path that light has taken. Alright? The solute particles, remember, they cannot be separated from the mixture by the process of filtration. Remember, if you have salt plus water, if you pass it through a filter paper, what happens? You will not be able to filter them. Why? Because the particle size are simply too small. The size of the particle is simply too small. It will just simply pass through the filter paper. Right? It is smaller than 1 nanometer. So, it is very difficult for you to separate salt and water through the process of filtration. You have to explore some other method to separate them. Alright? Remember the solute particles. Okay? I have been using two words. One is solute. Other is solvent. Okay? Solute. The salt in this case is a solute. What is getting dissolved? is called as solute okay what is dissolving water in this case this is called as solvent okay water has another nickname it is often called as a universal solvent you will see that most of the things that you see in nature they are soluble in water okay so that is the reason it is often referred to as a universal solvent okay that means solute gets dissolved in the solvent here i am trying to tell you the solute particles do not settle down that means this is the solution i leave this undisturbed for a while if I leave this undisturbed for a while, you don't see any settlement over here. This you don't observe. So that means when it is left undisturbed, the solute particles, that means salt particles are not seen at the end of the glass. Okay. That means the solution is stable. Okay. So these are all characteristic features of solution. Right. Let's take the discussion further and let's talk about the next concept that is suspension. So this is when solids are dispersed in liquids. They are called as suspension. For example, let's say I'm taking mud, okay? I'm taking mud and I add it to water. What happens? It gets dirty. There are chunks of mud here and there, right? A suspension is basically a heterogeneous mixture. Heterogeneous is a word that is opposite of homogeneous. That means it's a non-uniform distribution, right? Non-uniform mixture in which solute particles, remember, mud, it will not dissolve in water. They will not dissolve. They will actually remain suspended throughout the bulk of the medium. So you will be able to see chunks of mud here and there. 
they simply do not get dissolved right particles of suspension remember are visible to the naked eye you will be able to see the solute you will be able to clear cut see the mud right so that's what particles of suspension they are visible to naked eye unlike you know you're not able to see the particles of salt over here you will be able to see the particles of suspension the particles of sus suspension remember they scatter a beam of light passing through it and hence make the path visible okay that means you are displaying tyndall effect let's just get back to this example this is a glass of water okay right this is water let's put mud over here so this is mud this is mud this is mud like this this is mud like this etc right so if you see light going here it gets scattered it goes elsewhere it goes elsewhere it light goes elsewhere right only some light will be able to go like this right some lights go like this some of them go like this right some of them make it like this so in this case you will be able to trace out the path of the light why because the rest of the light they are getting scattered like this okay so that is the reason only certain light beams are able to make it to the other end so from here you will be able to clearly see the path of the light you will be able to see the path as visible it will be as visible as this okay it will be as visible as this you will be able to trace out the path of the light okay so that is what why because remember the particles in a suspension they are big enough to scatter a beam of light but over here when we were talking about solution i told you this is not possible why because the particle size is very very small so scattering is not taking place over here but in case of suspensions the scattering is possible all right solute particles right this is what they are displaying tyndall effect the solute particles they settle down when a suspension is left undisturbed what happens is you leave this for a brief period of time right you leave it like this over the period of time you will see what happens is you will see that all these particles right all these big big particles they start to settle down over here okay they will start to settle down like this all right unlike unlike in a solution solution as i told you they are stable they don't settle down but in case of mud plus water you will see after a period of time the mud starts to settle down all right since the particle size is big enough we can use the process of filtration to separate suspension so that means by simply passing it through a filter paper i will be able to separate out the mixture right i can separate out water i can separate out mud simply by the process of filtration all right along the same lines there is a third concept that i would like to discuss with you third concept is called as colloids the particles of a colloid remember they are uniformly spread throughout the solution for example why don't i give you example of milk milk is a colloid right why don't i give you water plus milk that's an example of colloid okay so here also remember due to relatively small size of particles as that compared to a suspension the mixture appears to be homogeneous that means it appears to be homogeneous it appears to be well mixed and uniform but remember in reality it is not homogeneous all right for example let's take an example of milk or why not milk plus water all right but actually remember a colloidal solution is a heterogeneous solution right for example i just gave you this example colloid remember they are big enough to scatter a beam of light passing through them so that means they make the path of the light visible so the particles of colloid they are big enough they are not as small as particles in a solution so that's why these are big enough to scatter a beam of light okay and they are making the path of light visible and remember one thing special about colloids is that they don't settle down when left undisturbed that means if you put milk undisturbed for a brief period of time you will not see the solute settling down okay but in suspensions i told you the mud will start to settle down so that means we can conclude that colloids like solutions are stable right and suspensions are unstable which is unlike colloids and solutions so this is our discussion on solutions suspensions and colloids so if you come across these terminologies please don't freak out these are all been explained to you all right so they will not explain these terminologies in the prelims examination they expect you to know all of them and the reason is very simple these are concepts that are given in your class 9th ncert so everybody is expected to study science and technology till class 10 right and obviously to understand to have a scientific temper to understand recent science and technology developments you should be familiar with these basic concepts all right there are some common examples of colloid right you can have a look at this table they used to ask such questions but nowadays it is 
not being asked uh, maybe in your state public service commission examination such questions can be asked so with respect to that maybe you can prepare this but otherwise as far as upsc is concerned they are not going to ask questions from you all right and a few minutes ago i just explained to you a concept that is called as all right so as you know right now i have been using regularly the word called as measures all right let's try to understand these terminologies first of all i explained to you the concept of matter matter means matter is anything that has mass and that occupies space that means it has volume this is what i told you in the very first class on class 9 ncrt i described this concept of matter to you there are two types of matters you can have matters that are pure substances you can have matter that is a mixture right mixture means there is no fixed decomposition right for example if you take water water always has two parts of oxygen and one part of hydrogen if you talk about carbon dioxide carbon dioxide always occurs like this so there is always fixed decomposition but in case of mixture i can have 10 grams of salt in 100 gram 100 liters of water etc the composition is not fixed all right you can have homogeneous mixtures you can have heterogeneous mixtures i just told you about a homogeneous mixture the example was solutions right in solution for example sugar in water salt in water sulfur in carbon disulfide water in alcohol etc these are all examples of homogeneous mixtures that means the composition seems to be uniform you can have non uniform composition for example sand and salt sugar and salt water and oil etc these are examples of heterogeneous mixtures where the composition is not uniform let's now come back to pure substances pure substances means they cannot be broken down into simpler substances for example if you see carbon dioxide i can break down into carbon and oxygen h2o water i can break it into hydrogen and oxygen so i can break them i can break a compound these are called as compounds i can break them into simpler substances but if i have carbon if i have oxygen if i have hydrogen can i break them down into simpler substances obviously not possible example copper oxygen iron mercury hydrogen etc these are all examples of elements all right elements together they will make up compounds see compounds means they have a fixed composition see whenever you see carbon dioxide doesn't matter where you see carbon dioxide whether it is in india us or in some other part of the universe also universe also if you see carbon dioxide carbon dioxide will always have one part of carbon and two parts of oxygen water will always have two parts of hydrogen and one part of oxygen right so they always appear in fixed they can be broken down into elements by chemical or electrochemical reaction okay so these can be broken down so as i told you carbon dioxide can be broken into carbon and oxygen by electrolysis hydrogen and oxygen can also be broken down into sorry h2o water can be broken down into hydrogen and oxygen some examples water h2o methane is ch4 theek hai sugar salt etc salt for example sodium chloride is a salt magnesium chloride is a salt these are all examples of salt these are all examples of compound. right if you talk about rock salt the table salt that we use it's called as common salt it is sodium chloride it is made of one part of sodium other part of calcium sorry chlorine all right so that's why it is sodium chloride all right these are examples of pure substances these are mixtures since i introduced to you this concept of mixtures right i am going to tell you how these mixtures can be separated what are the various technologies we have to separate these mixtures all right so very simple process is by the process that is called as filtration okay filtration of water this also happens you know this is what happens in most of the places before water arrives at your home you have the reservoir reservoir could be lake it could be a river it could be an ocean it could be a sea whatever all right so first is you have something called as sedimentation right so what happens is water goes in over here so whatever big big particles are there right they will settle down. these are called as sediments they will settle down. all the bulky parts etc they will settle down. okay then you see there are some impurities that are suspended right heavy particles will settle down over here there are some particles that are not so heavy right they are suspended in water so then they have to be suspended these impurities have to be suspended so that's why for that you have a loading tank all right then from there the water goes into this filtration tank so as you can see there is fine sand there is gravel there is coarse gravel so as water penetrates through these areas through these layers of uh, gravel coarse gravel fine sand etc so big big particles etc they are all trapped at the above areas all right then after that it goes into this tank there there is chlorination taking place chlorination is basically to kill off microorganisms all right and then finally after all the process takes place water reaches your home okay 
if water is taken directly from the reservoir it could be unhealthy right they will have a lot of impurities they will have a lot of bacteria etc there are a lot of microorganisms that can cause diseases in you and all so that's the reason we make water undergo this process called as filtration all right this is one method of separation of impurities right there are impurities or mixtures so this is an example of mixture water having so many other you know impurities in them is an example of mixture right this is the process of filtration along the same lines we have another process for separation this is called as centrifugation all right one classic example i'll give you that you will be able to correlate the process this is used for separation of cream from milk all right so this is something very familiar to you how do you separate the cream from the milk you do a process called as centrifugation all right i'll show you a picture this is called as a centrifuge so what you do is you put the mixture inside these vials right you will put mixture inside these vials and this entire apparatus will be rotated at a very very high speed okay so at the end of the process you will see that the mixture is separated what is the concept behind that remember when you are applying force like this when you are when you are you know sort of rotating it in a high speed you will see that there is a centrifugal force that is acting outward it is acting downward right this force is responsible for forcing the denser particles to the bottom and the lighter ones to the top okay so the denser particles because remember we already talked about convection while talking about class 7 ncert i told you how denser particles they tend to move down so because of the centrifugal force because of the force that is getting into play denser particles are pushed to the bottom and the lighter ones they tend to stay at the top when they are spin very rapid all right what are the various applications what are the various places in which we are using this process of centrifugation remember one obviously is for separation of cream from milk other than that it is used in diagnostic laboratories for blood and urine tests so if you are taking some blood test or urine test we would like to understand what are the various content in your blood etc so using density is this concept right if there is any other uh, you know substance in your blood etc by because of difference in densities the denser object will come down and the less denser object will stay at the top so we will be able to separate out mixtures that are present in your blood that are present in your urine etc so drugs etc can also be found out like this this is used in dairies and home to separate butter from cream okay this is another simple application of the process of centrifugation and remember the centrifugation also is used in washing machines remember if you have seen after the washing all takes place the washing machine it rotates at a very 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 high speed that is during the process of drying okay i think it's called as drying if i'm not mistaken in the process the washing machine is spun at a very very high speed so what happens is this particular force that is applied right this outward force that is applied centrifugal force this is squeezing out water from the wet clothes and all these water etc they are making their exit right this is also used in the process of washing machine all right then i would like to discuss one more topic related to separation of mixture this is chromatography all right you might have heard the name it's a technique used for separation of those solutes solute means what is getting dissolved they dissolve in the same solvent right solvent means for example let's just give you a random example what what is a solvent salt also dissolves in water sugar also dissolves in water so that means this is a these are solutes that dissolve in the same solvent right so for such purposes i mean for not this for similar situations like this where you have a solvent and it is dissolving multiple solutes if you want to separate out each of the solute you go for a process that is called as chromatography all right let's talk about applications remember this is used for separating colors in a dye remember in a dye you have multiple colors if you want to separate out those colors from natural colors you want different pigments you want to separate drugs from the blood okay for all these purposes we use it we use a a technique or method that is called as chromatography all right as i told you a dye is a mixture of two or more colors the colored component that is more soluble in water it rises faster in the way the colors get separated let me just explain what's happening right as i'm telling you a dye is a mixture of two or more colors it is made up of two or more colors all right let's just take an example of this dye that we have over here okay this is the spot of ink i have put over here this is a dye it is made up of multiple colors all right so all these multiple colors the dye is made up of all of them are soluble in water okay so these are multiple solutes soluble in the same solvent so what you do is you take a strip of paper right you draw a line like this and you are putting a spot of ink over here okay the next process is you take a small rod like this you hang this particular strip like this such that the bottom part it is immersed in water all right so over the period of time what happens is 
over the period of time you will see that the dyes they get separated all right it sort of starts to look like this this is the line right over here you will see some color over here you will see some other color over here you will see some other color all right so you are able to separate the dye different imagine these are the three colors that the dye is made up of so the dye the colors get separated what is really happening remember a dye is a mixture of two or more colors the colored component that is more soluble in water okay so in this case it's yellow so yellow was present over here initially right yellow was present over here initially so yellow happens to be the most soluble in water so that is the reason being most soluble in water yellow times tends to rise faster so that is the reason it has gone way up ahead then between green and blue blue tends to dissolve faster in water so that is the reason blue tends to rise higher than green and then finally we have green so as you can see the colored component that is more soluble in water whatever item is more soluble in water that is rising faster and in this way the colors are getting separated all right everybody so this is yet another way of separate uh, yet another way to separate your mixtures all right so just try to remember these terminologies in the next lesson i will be starting with the concept of atoms we will be talking about the atomic atomic theory molecules ions molecular mass law of conservation of mass all those things related to the basics of atomic physics will be covered over here over the period of time after we are done with science and crts i will be making videos on particle physics and nuclear physics etc then you would be expected to know concepts like isotopes and isobars etc all right so let me stop here for now before stopping i would like to just tell you about the initiative and academy plus right it is a way to help you in your preparation for the upsc civil services examination and various other examination so very soon there is a uh, you know price increase that is going to take place so if you're interested in being a part of plus i would ask you to come and enroll earlier as soon as possible and if you are enrolling you can use my referral code that is akm siva this will give you a 10% off okay just to tell you a little bit about an academy plus program right these are special uh, these are live classes that are conducted by educators across the country these are educators who have had experience in guiding and uh, you know guiding and successfully guided students through various examination especially in the civil services examination significant number of students have also cleared from an academy plus classes uh, in the recently concluded civil services examination so these are various batches that are starting at different points of time for example there's one that started on 19th october 14th october 14th of october some of them are conducted in english these are conducted in hindi some of them are also bilingual all right so this is for the mains examination these are these are special batches for 2020 mains examination that is going to be conducted in january all right so these are various features you can definitely check them out right you just have to go for one subscription you have unlimited benefits you have access to all the educators contents seamlessly you can choose you have so many options as far as courses are concerned as far as educators are concerned for each of the course your multiple educators taking in so you can choose whichever educator you are comfortable with and you can you know sort of complete your syllabus and be successful in the examination so as i told you you can use this referral code that is akm sisva and this will give you a 10% off so i'd like to conclude my lesson over here i would like to see you guys in the future at the same time so thank you so much all of you have a good day bye bye